iOS 8.1 may just be a minor upgrade for some, but it finalizes what Apple promised us that iOS 8 was going to be back at WWDC 2014. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and these are our first impressions of iOS 8.1. Visually, this new version of iOS is identical to its predecessor. Unlike some of the design changes that we saw between iOS 7 and 7.1, iOS 8.1 is really just a change under the hood. The update includes several bug fixes to Wi-Fi performance and Bluetooth hands-free performance, which we can attest have improved, and yes, even fixes the screen rotation bug that we spent weeks hating as well. The cool changes lie really in the return of the camera roll, which uh, not only allows you to see what photos you took from this specific device, but it also ends the confusion of third-party applications that would always default to recents. Apple Pay also got launched, but the service is sadly only available to the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus in the United States at the moment, and you can only add US credit cards as well to the service, so you can't really add a foreign credit card and pay in the United States either. Keep a lookout for Taylor Martin's separate video on how Apple Pay works. Apple also launches iCloud Photo Library, which is currently in beta, and the company made a big fuss about it at their presentation. It allows you to have all your photos and videos and even the edits of these in full resolution in iCloud, but there are some downsides to the service as you do require to pay Apple's storage options, which are sadly too little, and uh, the services are too expensive when you compare what you can pay for Dropbox, for example, and uh, what you can get for pretty much the same deal at Dropbox. Another iCloud service that's working is iCloud Drive, and uh, where you can easily have your documents between one device and the other, like for example, create a document in the iPad and have it available on your Mac or iOS device running Yosemite. All these services are great, and they work really seamlessly as long as your internet connection is fast enough to download the documents and the changes between them. The coolest changes come in continuity and handoff, where it does pay off for you to own an iPad and a Mac along with your iPhone. You can start a spreadsheet on the iPad and pick up where you left off on the iPhone by sliding the icon on the lock screen. You can also answer a phone call or a text message on the Mac or the iPad if your iPhone is charging on the other room. Our tests so far have ran quite well, though keep in mind that all devices have to be on the same Wi-Fi connection for most of these services to work. We also wish that there was another way to access this service, like from the notification center or something, and not just the lock screen gesture which can become cumbersome and is not always reliable on the separate device. Overall, iOS 8.1 has brought some of the changes that we've been waiting for, but it also gives Apple an extra edge over its competition. It does pay off to own an iPad and an iPhone and a Mac now, whereas you have no value in owning an Android tablet and an Android smartphone, or owning a Chromebook, for example. These are great opportunities that other competitors should follow, and so far, for the first version of Apple's attempt to make services like Continuity work, things are actually working quite well. Sadly, not everything is great. Things like the sluggishness and third-party keyboards are still there. There's still a lot of work with iOS 8, but uh, we do expect updates to come very soon. Expect more videos with new features from iOS 8.1 to come very soon from the rest of the team, and also follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. See you on the next video.